Welcome, Cornelius. Thank you for leading this meeting. And uh, I'll just let everybody know that if they have questions along the way, they can put them in the chat room, or I think they're welcome to just shout them out. Okay, great. Thank you guys for uh, attending this meeting. Uh, this is, again, part two of a two-part series, maybe a three-part series on Photoshop uh, new features, uh, 2024. Uh, so I'm going to do a quick review on what we covered the last time for those who may not have been here. In fact, I've improved on some of the things that I talked about previously. So more, more of a reason why I should uh, go over some things we talked about the last time. And then we are going to cover some additional new features that I think is really exciting uh, that you may want to take advantage of. With that, with that thought in mind, let's talk about the first thing, and that is uh, what I refer to as, um, well, let me just open up this window to show you what it is. So you, this tool right here, I don't know if you guys can see it, right here, it may be a little bit small, I'm gonna be explaining things as I go, because I know it's really far, small. Cornelius, the text isn't readable, at least not when I have my chat. Right. Oh, and and I'm going I'm 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 to communicate that as I go. But this little window right here is a lifesaver, particularly for beginners. Now, I'm so used to doing things the old fashioned way because, you know, I got 20 years experience in Photoshop. So, you know how to do a quick selection. You know how to do all the types of masks, right? A quick mask, a layer mask, a filter mask, you know, alpha channel mask, you know, all, all the different types of masks. And I know how to do that with my eyes closed, but this one allows you to do it really easy. Removing background and all that fun stuff is, is just a piece of cake, and that's a technical term, uh, to do. So normally the way I teach is I kind of tell you what we used to do versus the way the way, the way you can do it now, which is a lot easier. And I'm going to talk a lot about that. Uh, again, I, because I've been at this thing so long, um, I appreciate it a lot better than, than someone just starting off with Photoshop because they all they got to do is push a button now, right? Back in the old days, you know, 10, 15 years ago, we had to do a whole lot to do what you, you can do today with just a click of a button. So, you know, life, you know, life is good today. So anyway, let's talk about, first of all, before you do anything in Photoshop, as you know, my chauvinism on that is only what's selected gets affected by what you do next, right? So once you make a selection, uh, you can cut, copy, paste, crop, transform, to name a few. So it's all about the selection. So if, in the old days, the way we used to make a selection, let's say right here, uh, was with several different types of selection tools. Now, you know you have a selection, uh, and this is a chauvinism, by the way, uh, you, you know you have a selection defined when you see the digital ants marching in a line. So let's illustrate that. Uh, back in the old days, you know, five, 10 years ago, uh, we used to use what they call the quick selection tool. I love, I remember when that tool first came out, it was a, it was worth the price of admission to purchase the upgrade to Photoshop before we went to the creative cloud stuff. Remember we said you could buy a copy of Photoshop and it'd be yours, right? Now you got to buy, you know, you got to, you got to renew it every year unless you don't use it. I use that tool right? today, the quick selection tool. Say that again. I used it today. Yeah. Well, that that quick because I had a group of tool. people and the it wouldn't the automatic selection is tough when you have a group of people and you're trying to get one person you know and their arms crossed and all right. that. Right. Yeah. It it, has, it still probably has its advantages uh, today, uh, but I remember I, I mean bad memories I may add where this one one guy we working for we were working for Motorola he would literally spend an hour tracing this this subject uh, with the pen tool and then converting that stroke into a selection. I mean, hours, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cause you know, you wanted to get it really tight, right? And he would literally go around that subject to select it. It would take hours just to select a subject. And I'm thinking, man, I hate this stuff, right? <laughs> so one of the reason why I got away from Photoshop initially. And then after a while, it was, I found out they had this new tool called the quick selection tool, which all you have to do is just swipe around, uh, inside of the object or the subject uh, and make a selection like that, right? 
uh, you know, and, and that's not bad. You know, it does a fairly good job of, you know, looking at the edges and defining the edges uh, of the subject. Uh, but again, that's still tedious. Okay, that's one way we made a selection. Another way we made a selection was uh, if it was an irregular shape, let me do Control D, remember, or Command D on a Mac. Uh, we would use the lasso tool and then you could draw around. Now, obviously, this is not, you know, you probably wouldn't want to use this tool to make a selection, but you kind of just draw around the, the object that a irregular shape that you want to select and get a selection. Again, you know you have a selection when you see the digital ants uh, marching in a line. Okay, so that's the way to make a selection. And then, just recently, in previous version of Photoshop, about a year or so ago, they came out with this new tool. Let me do Control D or Command D uh, to deselect. And it is called, this is a new tool. Some of you may not have used it yet. It is called a selection brush tool. So for you artists out there, if you like those who like to paint, I guess ink line design would probably love this tool. Um, you can literally just draw a selection. Now the, the brush selection tool is the enhanced version of the quick mask. If you know anything about what a quick mask is, is a mask that gets created quickly. Um, it allows you to create a selection by painting, which I think is a little bit more intuitive for most people. Uh, so I can literally go around this person like so and in just roughly, right? And when I do that and let the mouse go, it would automatically fill in that area. In, in the old days, if that was a quick mask, I would, I'd be constantly doing all of this for five minutes to make, to, to, to select that mask or to create that. But now that is a visible mask. That's a quick mask of sort, right? If you select any other tool, now you see the selection. If I can want, want the crop tool. But if you select any other tool, now you have a selection. So those are several ways to create a selection. And again, you still need those tools for certain projects, right? Certain images, you will be still relying on those two to make a selection. So that's one way of making a selection. I'm going to talk about the advantage of using that tool in a minute. Uh, but let me do Control D or Command D again to deselect. The easy way to make this selection is to wait for it, wait for it. All you have to do is click the select subject button <laughs> and make a selection. How many of you with a little effort? I'm saying this jokingly, okay? How many with a little effort do you think you can do that? Okay. <laughs> Even Karen can do that, right, Karen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so all you had to do was click that select subject, and that AI, y'all you're, you're familiar with AI, right? All the AI stuff going on these days. I love AI when it's used for good, right? I love technology when it's used for good and when it works. That's my chauvinism there for the day. Uh, but one click, what used to take us hours to do, and, and I'm not exaggerating, you guys, because, you know, I, I got experience with this, literally is one click away to make a selection. Now, once you make a selection, then you have to figure out what to do with that selection, right? And typically you got to refine it, right? Sometimes you got to feather it or, or make it bigger, make it smaller, depending upon the object in the image that you want to select. Uh, well, you have to kind of go over here and figure out what to do or go to the menu. You know, you got selection things here and you kind of go down here and do a couple of things there, here, there, and everywhere, right? Well, Again, if you got this little menu open, it auto, it has it right down at the bottom here for you. So you're not hunting and chasing around the menu or the toolbar to find out what to do with a selection. This is this menu, by the way, you can, as you will see, is, is context sensitive, meaning it changes based upon what you're doing, which is a good thing. So let's see a, let's see a few things you can do with this selection. First of all, you could come over here and you can modify the selection. Now there's several things you can transform a selection, meaning you can rotate it, skew it, whatever. Now, obviously you wouldn't want to transform this selection because it's 
not an object. It's not something that you would want to trans transform. But let's just show you that. If I do that, you get the this is a this is akin to Command T, right? When you do the free transformation tool, and then you can you know you can rotate that selection, uh, move it, whatever you need to do. Now, probably you probably wouldn't want to do that, but that's what you can do with that transformation uh, tool. So let me get out of that uh, and cancel that. And then I'm gonna show you that there's select border. Now you can select the border of the object using that. You can smooth the selection, expand the selection, meaning you can increase the number of pixels outside of the selection, or you could decrease the number of pixels inside of the selection. In fact, let me just illustrate one of those. Let's do outside. So do expand the selection. And this is four, meaning it's gonna push the pixels. I like that, push the pixels. Uh, five pixels outward. So if I click OK, pay attention to where the that marching ants are right now. When I click OK, bam, you know, it expanded it. Okay. And likewise, you could go in if you wanted to make sure that you, you know, you had some of the inside of the image covered if you wanted to do that. And again, there's a reason why you would want to do that. But the, the good news is that you have those options available where you can increase the selection, decrease the selection, feather the selection. Instead of having that hard edge, you have a feathered edge for that selection. And then you can select I, in mass. I think when we use the quick quick selection tool, didn't they used to have an option to smooth it? Yeah. That, to yeah, you do. That, that smooth the selection, that's that one right here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So once you have a selection, then you just define what you want to do it. The good news now is you have it right here at your fingertip, which I like to say, uh, which is good. So that's one thing you can do. Now, let me do control. Uh, it used to be under, or you select, modify. Right. right, yeah. Yeah. So you do select, modify. You see all of them right here. Well, why go yeah. there when you got them right here? Giant right. on the spot, right? Again, you, you got the select and mask up here. You got that here. You know, you got grow and similar, transform selection. All of that is right here, literally at your fingertip. Thank you. Okay, so that's one thing you do. You First of all, Greater selection. Ninety percent of the things you do, at least that I do in Photoshop, is getting a good selection. Now, the golden rule is when nothing is selected, the whole canvas gets affected, right? I mean, you have an implied selection. So let me do Control D to deselect that to illustrate what I'm saying. If I do Control A, like you do in most program, Control A does what? Anybody? Select all, like, oh, right? Like in most program. Uh, you notice the marching ants, the digital, when you see the digital ants, you know you have a selection defined when you see the digital ants marching in a line. You see the little ants and then you can see, see it right there? They marching. In fact, I got a little animation where I, I, I changed those black and dot, black and white uh, dashes to ants and they literally walking across, walking around the screen. It's kind of cute uh, on one of my YouTube videos. So, you have what we refer to as implied selection. So you don't need to do control A to make a selection. If you don't have any selection, let me do command D, command and control D, you have an implied. So anything you do will be applied to the whole canvas, right? But typically 90% of the time you want to select an object in the image like this girl and cut her out, put on another, put her against another background or remove the background or invert the background or something. All right, but you typically start with a selection. So let's get back to our selection again. May I ask and, you a question? If you with this version, if you wanted to select two discontinuous objects, is that can you do that? You can. Uh, typically, the way this works is it's select. I guess it. And again, uh, I don't know all the algorithm behind it. But it typically looks for the main object in the image and select it. Now you could always you could still go in and make other selection. If I use my, um, let's see, I want to use let's let's use just a, a simple tool to illustrate this. If I click here and drag, I'm gonna lose this selection. But if I hold on the the uh, the shift key, remember what the shift key does? It adds to the selection. So if I can click and drag, notice I have two selections now. Now to subtract from a selection, you hold the option key and you can take away from the selection. So you could create multiple selections. You just have to use multiple tools. 
to create it. So nothing what, really changed in terms of those using multiple keys, you know, control keys. Right. Yeah. All of the stuff you did in the past, which I still do, and, and you will still need, at least as advanced users. I think AI or all of this artificial intelligence, I think it's going to... I don't want to say it was going to, it's going to get rid of beginners graphics designers. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I can't say that. Uh, but you know, for a lot of stuff you can do now with literally with a click of a mouse that normally you would take a lot of time to do. Uh, and then, and then creating images, you know, on a fly just with text prompts. I mean, how easy can you get for crying out loud? Right. So the bottom line is you start off with a selection uh, and then you do whatever you want to do with that selection. So let me do control D again to deselect that because I want to get just, just a girl selected. And then let's look at some other things. Now, typically you select an object in the image to select that object in the image. I sound like a, a little, little rhyme right there, right? Uh, but what if I wanted to select the background, right? Well, the way you do that is uh, you know, you go up here in the old days, uh, two years ago, <laughs> you would invert the selection or use a combination of keyboard shortcut for you keyboard lovers out there, right? So that's one way to invert a selection. But why do that? You can come down here and you see this little black and white. Uh, it looked like a little, you know, uh, reflection mirror type thing. Well, that's how you invert a selection. So Instead of selecting the girl, I want to select the background, right? So if I select that, in fact, if I do the, let me let me do the girl. Let me let me see what I can do. If I hit the delete key, just to show you again, because you typically start off with a selection, then you do something with that selection. Uh, if I got a selection of an object, in the, in this case, this girl. If I hit the delete key, uh, let me duplicate this first. That's what I wanted to do. Let me deselect, because I always like to do Control J. By the way, because this layer is locked, right? So I'm going to turn that layer off. Keep it locked just as a backup, my backup of backups, right? Uh, and then I love this feature, being a click on that. Bam, I'm back in business. Uh, now, let me do a delete. Okay, let's see what happens. I'm hitting the delete key. Bam, it delete, de de was selected got affected, right? So it deleted a girl. What if I wanted to delete the background? Well, I would have to invert the selection, right? Uh, and an easy way of doing that is clicking on this button right here. And what that's gonna do is gonna invert the selection. Uh, now, you know you have an inverted selection because this used to get me confused. When is it selected and when it is inverted, right? Uh, you know you have an inverted selection, let me, uh, do this so you can see about when you see the marching ants on the outside and the inside. Okay. That's when you know you have inverted selection. Now, when I hit the delete key, let's do that same delete key yet again. It's going to delete the background kind of background removal, right? You guys, because you always have need of removing background, don't you? Right. Now that's the hard way I may add of doing that. Uh, because there's an easy option of doing that. So let me do control. Before you leave, did it pick up some pixels and take them out of her ankle and foot? Um, say that again? I'm wondering if it took something, pieces out of her ankle and foot. I see white spots on her foot now. Oh, that's just some water. Yeah, this stuff right oh, here is, okay. uh, that, that's part yeah, of the original. That's part of the picture. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the picture. Um, so it didn't it didn't remove that. It just that just happened to be this is not actually a good picture yeah. to work with, but I, I see I see more clearly now. Yeah, but that's that's actually so now watch what I hit when I hit delete this time, it removed the background because I invert the selection, meaning I'm selecting the background and, and the old show pen isn't for that, the little wrap, because I wrap everything right. Uh is if you want to uh select the background, invert the selection all around. There you go. Uh, if you want to remove the background, invert the selection all around. And that's what I did. Now I have that background. So let me do Control D to deselect that. Uh, let me do Control Z, Command Z. Okay, and then I'm going to do Control D or Command D to uh, get back to where I was at. All of that is old school. I mean, it's good to do, fun to do. I, I still do it because I, you know, just 
second nature for me to do it, right? But just like making a selection, instead of going to, you know, doing a quick mass and all that craziness or tracing around this, all that craziness, just like select subject was easy to select, right? Let me deselect that. Removing a background is easy too. Once you have an object or layer selected, you get this look sweet option. How cool is that? Remove a selection. I don't even have to make a selection. How cool is that? Click remove object. Bam. I remove background and I say remove object, remove background, and voila. How cool is that? That is what we call slicking and slime. How many of you know slime is slick? Okay, that's the title of my new book. Um, I'm just saying that jokingly, but uh, that's cool to me. Being able to do that with one click, I'm, I'm I'm jazzed about that. Now, notice again because we have we 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 it's context sensitive. I get some additional options, right? I get the option to do transform, right, uh, or to use an adjustment layer. So I can use transform, and then I can transform that image. Uh, however I want to. I can rotate it, resize it, skew it, add a perspective, warp, whatever you want to do uh, to that image just that easily. We'll click that off. And then I could cancel that to dismiss it. Uh, and then you have a adjustment layer. An adjustment layer will adjust the layer uh, with some type of effect, right? So if you click on it, you know, back in the old days, you had to kind of hunt chase this down. Now you got it right here. If I want to make that image black and white, click that right there, bam. One click, I'm there without much fuss. Is that not cool or not? That's cool to me, okay. Um, everything's cool to me, I guess, these days. Okay, uh, so let's I'm go back. Curious, I'm curious how many other menu choices are on that context menu that you've been showing us. Uh, well, let's are see. There a got lot of choices? Well, it depends. I mean, it it, it changed. Depend what we. It depends upon what you're doing. Okay, right now I'm in the. I mean, I'm just clicking on the layer, so I get this layer set of features. Right, what you do with a layer. Now, if so I that's use, the context menu for whatever tool is right. Out there. That and the creative, the generative field function built right into it at the same time. Okay, so you, it, this used to be when I think when they first released it, I believe where you could just type a prop in and then do something, right? Now, you not only can you type a prompt, but you can also do a whole host of things before you do the prompt. And we'll see some example of that in a minute. Man, get on at this rate, I'm gonna be, I hadn't even gotten to <laughs> part one of my series uh, of my discussion. Okay, so yeah, so watch. What, if I had the C key, C for prop, right? in order to change it to a totally different menu. I'm telling you, I love that, okay? Uh, I love that. So I hit C again. Uh, I mean, I get out of that, I'm hitting another tool. So that this menu right here, what we call a context, uh, what is it called? Uh, con contextual taskbar, it changes based upon the context, right? Uh, depending upon what you're doing. So. Now, another thing you can do, uh, going back to that example, once you have a selection, it's all, again, it's all about the selection, right? Uh, once you have a selection, you can mask the selection right here. So this is another option right here. See, uh, create mask from selection. That's what that little two tip, you may not be able to read it. So it's create mask from selection. Now let's see what that happen, what happens. This would create a, what we call a, if you guys can see that, this is a layer mask. There's a layer mask, there's a vector mask, quick mask, gradient mask, uh, alpha channel mask, to name a few, right? It created a mask. Now, it didn't get rid of the image. It just applied a mask to that image, right? And you can see the mask right here. It's a little black and white. You guys know the golden rule, right? I know John knows it because he does video editing. What is it, John? Black and white? Black and One reveals and one conceals. Black conceals, white reveals. Conceal what though? Because a lot of times people like to use that quote, and they don't know what it what 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 you know. It's, and it's cute, right? Black conceals, white reveal. What is what is the black conceals and what is the white reveals is the main it, thing. It right? entails any bitmaps, any image, any any pixels. Pixels. 
Right. So the black will conceal pixels, making them transparent. Right. That's what why that's why this background is transparent. White will reveal pixels, making them opaque where they can be seen. Right. Now I could I could select this mask and using my brush tool. And I can literally paint back the you can see the little dot right there. Maybe you can see, maybe you can't. Uh and then I can toggle, okay, because I'm on white right now. Remember, black conceals, white reveals, right? If I toggle black and white, now I can erase. Okay. I'm I not, I'm not messing with the image. I'm, I'm just I'm 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 messing with the that's the technical term, messing with. Uh, the the uh the mass. The mass is hiding or showing the layer beneath it. That's what a mass does. It's show, hide, or protect what's underneath it. Okay. What, what was that, John? Sometimes people have trouble picking that up, and I might describe it as a stencil. Yeah, it's more like yeah. a stencil. Yeah. But any mask, I tell people, regardless of its type, whether it's a real world mask or uh, is it any type of any type of mask in Photoshop or any other program for that matter, uh, can only do three things: show, hide, or protect what's underneath it. If you get that down in your mind, mass in my in the title of my YouTube video, if you go look at it, is you, you, you get rid of that mystery of the mass. Because some people get confused about the mass. And if you're going to elevate your, your creativity, you better learn how to mass things. Because I have students oh, right. come to me at ITT. They would spend two hours doing something like this. And then, you know, doing it, not doing it the right way. And then I do it like in two minutes. That's a big disparity, right? Uh, but you have to know about masking to be able to do this, right? Uh, they'd be erasing stuff manually and all that craziness, right? And, and that's a way to hide things is erase it, but that's destructive. You always should strive to be non-destructive. The, the technical term is non-destructive editing, right? I'm sure you guys have heard of that term before, right? Uh, you never, 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 did I say never? Never destroy your original image. Okay, this image is not destroyed. In fact, let me show you. If I hold on the command key and uh, rather the shift key and click on that, notice I'm hiding the mask. See, so that, the image is still there. I didn't do a, a thing, or as we say, a squat, that's a technical term, right? To that image, right? It's just being hidden or shown by this mask. If I hit the shift key again, I could turn that mask off. Now I could drag this mask to the trash, right? They look look cupcake down there. I had one of my students say, oh, that's a cupcake. No, no, that's not a cupcake, that's a trash can. Um, down at the bottom there. Uh, and hit delete, bam, and I'm back to my original image. Okay, so I've never messed with my original image in this document. Anyway, uh, now that I have, I'm on this layer, notice I have some other options. I could, I could transform the image, I could add a, Adjustment layer, you saw we add a brightness. I could change colors, right? Hue saturation. This is a good way to change clothing and other things on a person, right? Just select. And now the quick mask will come in handy for that, right? So for example, uh, if I use a quick mask, because when you do select subject, it selects the whole subject. But if I use a quick mask, uh, maybe I just want to select this shirt right here. So again, you're not getting rid of these tools. You're just using them. You, you know, you need to know when to use the right tool for the right job. You carpenters, you know what I'm talking about out there. You budding carpenters, y'all know what I'm, uh, I'm talking about. Y'all do it yourself, folks. You know what I'm talking about, right? So now that I had that shirt selected, uh, and I used the adjustment thing. I want to maybe I want to change that not because it's white. It may not do a whole lot because white is like a neutral color, right? Uh, but let me do a colorize and pull on this, pull on that. You kind of see a change of color. Now, the reason why I'm having issues with it is because white is a neutral color. Uh, but look, I changed a shirt. Where I, I missed some areas right here and right there, but you guys get the drift. I could change a, a color of an object without, a me without messing with the texture of the object. Notice the texture you can see right here, uh, right here to, in the clothing, right? I didn't blow that away by changing the color, right? If I did fill that selection, it would be all green. It'll blow away everything in the shirt, right? 
if I had a selection, if I do hold on to command key and click, and then right click in here and do fill with, uh, let's just do black. Did I do black? Uh, let's see, let me do that again. Yeah, that's not working. Oh, okay. I know what I did. I made a mistake. That, that's you filled mean. it. You filled in the mask. Yeah, I filled the mask. I'm thinking, why is this stupid thing not working? And that is because <laughs> I'm filling the mask with black, and I'm gonna drag that to. I'm gonna drag this whole thing to the trash. So let me illustrate that again. So once I had that selection, if I was to fill this with black, right? So if right click and do fill, I'm surprised they don't have fill in in here. Uh, they got generative fill, but that's different. Uh, but if I fill this with black now, just on a layer and not on a mask, I made a mistake doing that a minute ago. If I fill that with black, bam, I blew everything away. Not what you want to do, right? Uh, typically. Now, there are cases where you, you want to do a solid color, but in this case, obviously, you want to change the color, not the texture of the object. This T-shirt in this example. Okay. Um, so when, I, when I'm shopping on Amazon, I may, might look at a sweater and then I'll look at it in 16 different colors. Right. And they have the little red. I mean, they have the, the little The model has the exact the same expression on her face. So it's probably all done in Photoshop, not black. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 They, 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 they take that one. And you can see it because it's the same girl or the same person, right? right? right. And they have the same, the same, it is the same thing. And they just make a yep. selection of that dress and just change the color and then and save that as a new picture. Right. And then they had the little bubble at the bottom there. You can select red, black, green, purple, and it'll mm -hmm. change the color based upon your selection. Because only was selected. You guys know it gets affected. Okay. I'm getting too far today, but it's all good. <laughs> all right. So that's how you could make a select. Now, once you make a selection again, let's do that again for the fifth time, right? Let me do Command D. And I'm using my select subject, which I love to do. Uh, what if I wanted to get rid of the girl? Back in the old days, we used to have to do this thing called cloning. Y'all remember cloning? I used to hate that cloning. So you had a sample color and it's kind of paint. You know, y'all remember cloning? That was a pain. <laughs> okay. If I want to remove an image, in this case, this girl right here from this image, once I get selected, because I have to have something selected to be affected, right? Um, uh, all I need to do is click on this button and now I can give it a prompt, but not right now. All I want to do is remove her, not add her or add something else in place of her. Right. We'll, we'll do that in a minute. So all I need to do is leave the prompt empty and then click generate and let the magic begin. Wait for it. Wait for it. You... Now, now I didn't get all of it, so I just uh, I'm gonna have to make a selection again. I don't know why it did it did it earlier, but let's just let's do it again. I'm gonna make that selection, and then gonna do uh, do that again, and then do that again. Doesn't always get it, um, but I just use the regular uh, rectangular marquee tool. Oh, now why did it add birds in this? <laughs> Not perfect, <laughs> but I mean that's kind of cute. I don't know why I did. I don't know why I had birds. Yeah, what's in. funny is there's no uh, what, no birds. I didn't add a prompt for birds, but so go figure, right? No, AI is still maturing, right? That, that should have just given me a clear cloud, right? Because like I wanted to move. Remember last the last time we met, we used let me use the lasso to make sure I'm on. Uh, I used the lasso tool, and I we wanted to get rid of the shadow, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got that. We hit that, and then we hit that, and hopefully that doesn't put a fish up there, right? <laughs> Let's see what it does. Yeah, you have a beached walrus. <laughs> okay, she had to just put more sand down there. Okay, that's what it's supposed to do, right? 
Uh, I don't know why I put birds up there, uh, but that's that's you know what can I say? It I mean, did have two more it, options. You know, it does when you on your bird one. On your what bird was that yeah, I was just about oh, yeah. to say that you can click the little arrow, right, in your toolbar, and then sometimes some look better than others. Yeah, but I but the the thing is, I didn't I didn't tell it to put birds up there. I just wanted to remove that that person from the scene. So why to add these birds is beyond me because I didn't tell it to. Yeah, it does that, man. Or do that. It, it knew people. it was the seashore, and it knew that there are often seagulls at the seashore. Maybe, so just, maybe, maybe so. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't always okay. get it. All right, it doesn't always get it. I mean, I didn't, I didn't. Now, let me just see if I can back out of this somewhat. Um, get back to her. Um, so, what if I want to replace her with something else? So once I have a selection, again, I click on this button, but this time I'm going to hit a prompt and I'm going to do a, um, I like UFOs, right? So I'm going to do a UFO. Okay. Uh, and then click, and then you could get as descriptive as you want, but for the sake of time, uh, I'm going to just click uh, generate and wait for it. Still generating. I got two UFOs, and and then now you can use the uh, wow, that's an interesting looking one. Uh, and I got some really good ones that, that when I did this earlier. In fact, if if you don't like those, you can just hit that generate button again, and it's going to generate some more iterations or what they call vari uh, variations of the UFOs. And so you can just hit that as many times as you want. This little generate button. Uh oh, that's that's really crazy. Um. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> is that a UFO sucking in? Uh... <laughs> not quite sure what that is. Uh, anyway, uh, it's not there yet. Uh, I'm gonna try again. I, I I actually got some really pretty ones right before this meeting, and now I got these little cartoon ugly looking things. That's not. And it's the same picture that I was, you know, I was, I uh, was, uh, that doesn't look like a UFO. I mean, it had one way it was, it, it was really going into the water and doing some stuff. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's weird. Uh, so anyway, what it does, by the way, when it does that, it creates this layer right here. You can literally just delete this, right? And again, I'm back to my original image. So you, again, it's non golden rule in Photoshop and any other program for that matter, is non-destructive editing. Never mess. And the analogy I give is, is like a wedding, wedding, right? If you got a photographer and you you hand them over your your images and, and say, I want you to, you know, uh enhance these images for me. And he and and uh he messed all the images up, you can't get them back, right? You know, so you need to, you know, you need to give them a backup copy of your 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 images and not the original. Because, you know, my show plan is and back it up before you jack it up. And my backups have backups. Okay. So I always have a backup copy of something somewhere. Uh so I always keep backup. And that's why I created this background layer and then created a layer from it. Cause if I ever mess this one up inadvertently, you know, uh, by painting on it, because when you paint on stuff, you literally etch it in stone as it were, I can always go back to my original backup layer uh, that I have locked uh, to uh, to work with. <clears throat> okay, so let's see what else we got. Um, so now if you use the shape tool, let's look at the shape tool uh, right here. This is a shape tool. You can create various types of what we call primitive shapes or custom shape. Let's just look at a primitive shape, shape just for the sake of time. Would uh, you would you read those? Because it's just not legible. Okay, yeah, yeah, let me do that. Uh, so again, you have the rectangular ellipse to the, the, the triangle to polygon to many sides, right? You have the line tool and you have a custom shape tool. So those are what we call the shape tools. And I'm going to create what we call primitive shapes. But the, the reason why I want to do that is uh, to show you that when you use the shape tool, notice, look, 
contextual selection there. Now I get things that are related to shapes, right? Which in this case would be the field color, right? It could be the, the stroke, right? Uh, I could bump, because that's a thick stroke. I could decrease it, I can increase the stroke, right? And then I could change the stroke type, right? Uh, I could change the corners, right? Uh, Let's do, I don't know, uh, let's do something like that, 40 or something, so you can see that better. Uh, so again, what, depending upon what object, in this case, this is a, a what we call a vector object, for you folks out there know what a vector is. Uh, this is a vector object, so you're going to get vector tools that you can work with. And then you have, um, you can make a copy, a duplicate, and then you can uh, you can get more properties from that, which is is highlighting this area right here to tell you these are the properties that you can manipulate as well some additional properties. Of could you, could you please describe those since they're kind of small? Yeah. So up here you have the transform to I mean transform sub panel, and this is the height width x y. So it's the, the size of it and where it's positioned on the canvas, right? Or I guess you call it canvas in Photoshop, mm -hmm. an artboard in Illustrator, depending upon how you want to call it, a stage in Flash, you know, wherever you want to call it. So that's what this is. And then and they have the angle. And then here you have the appearance. That's the the, the, the uh, background color, the field color, the stroke, the, the type of stroke, dash lines or whatever. And then what type of edges you have on the, on the, on the, uh, on the corners, that's what this is. And then the Pathfinder, remember how the Pathfinder tool, when you, you have two shape tool, you can blend right. them together, you can subtract from them, you can intersect the, the two together, right? And that's what this is, that's a, that's a totally different tool, which is available, by the way, under, where is it at? Did they move it from him? Pathfinder. As they took it out of the windows, and I'm not seeing anybody see the Pathfinder tool. I'm not seeing it. Maybe they took it out. Looks to me like that list is alphabetized. So no, it's not there. Yeah, because it would be right in here, right? Uh, so I guess they removed the Pathfinder tool from there. That's interesting. What? But they do have it right here. So the Pathfinder allows you to add or subtract shapes uh, from one another. Uh, that's what that does. Now you do a lot of that in Illustrator, um, more so than uh, Photoshop. Okay, now let's talk about one other thing um, that you can do. And let me delete the, by the way, these are just shapes. I could literally just delete them or I could right click and do delete, right? Uh, I could just select and hit delete. So it's common. Typically, there's three to five ways to do anything in Photoshop, I promise you. Okay. Uh, so pick your pill, if you will, on how you do things and whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, you could hit the delete key, right click, select D, delete, uh, drag it to the look, trash can down at the bottom here. Any combination of those will work. But what I wanted to show you was let me use the, the, the what I call a lollipop tool. It's one of my students, obviously, she had kids. She said, uh, you tell me that lollipop right there? That's a magnifying glass. Um, well, I thought it was funny. Uh, and then when I'm holding on the um, I'm holding on the option key, option to uh, go in the reverse direction or something. Oh, that kind of bounced around, didn't it? Now use the hand tool when you want to hand, use the hand to pan. That's how you remember that. Uh, but the reason why I made it smaller is because I want to show you how the crop tool uh, and how it works with generative fill. Okay, uh, back in the old days, two years ago, uh, you said to kind of make selections and then kind of fill in the selections uh, to expand the image if you use the crop tool. Now it's done automatically. So let's illustrate that. So if I hit the keyboard shortcut that you need to remember, believe me, because too many times you have to crop stuff. I mean, 
right? I mean, you got you usually have to crop something every 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 day, seems like. So you hit the C key, C for crop, right? So and you get the little borders, the little crop handles. If you can see them, these little things right here. And then you can you can pull out uh with you know uh some areas that you want to in make the image larger or smaller. You can make a lot of time you're thinking cropping, you think of making an object smaller, you're cutting something out, right? Well, crop can also be used to add things in. And this is a, a classical example, I may add, uh, no pun intended there, of adding stuff in. I'm going to double click on this hand tool so you can see that better. Uh, and then go back to my crop tool. What happened? Oh, I didn't want to. Okay. It automatically did it for me when I when I committed it. It automatically fills in the gap. And and now back in the days, y'all may remember this, is you used to have to uh if you wanted to, to create what they call a panoramic view. Remember that? You would take several images, literally stitch them together. Y'all remember doing that? Right? Uh now you can literally create a panoramic view by extending your your the width or the height or, or a combination thereof, and it automatically fills in the gap. Now, tell mm -hmm. me that that's not cool. It looks to me like it took the original picture and then made it bigger to cover the canvas and then cropped it to fit the aspect ratio of the new. Well, Is that it, what it, I'm seeing correctly? It, well, it, did, it doesn't really depend. Well, let's see, let me look at it. Let's say this couple of iterations of what it did right who was that one oh look at that there's somebody on the side there uh, <laughs> okay that's interesting uh it literally and it, it, it uses whatever artificial intelligence algorithm to say you know this is a picture of a beach with a girl in it and i know to extend that out further you know if it was a building it you know it'll add more buildings right uh, i've seen examples of that uh and so you you basically um, can create a panoramic view just by extending the uh, your, your image using the crop tool. And then when you use a crop tool, let me hit the uh, C key again. By the way, notice it created. Let me just let me drag this to the trash here. Oh, let me up against the time then. And and what I what I didn't show the last time was once you extend the image, you do this generative expand, okay? And it's going to fill this gap, and it's going to fill this gap. Now, like I'm saying, in the old days, you would have to make a selection here using your selection tool and make a selection here, and then they would do it. Now, it's smart enough to know that if I do this right, this expand option, it's going to automatically uh, use it. What was that again? Use this feature first. Drag the canvas to expand. Okay, well, let me let me do this. Let me get back to the original image so you can see this better. So I got that image, and let me use the crop tool first, and I'm gonna expand it this way. I'm gonna expand it that way. I'm gonna expand it that way, and we even expand it that way. Okay. Now, this time it's not letting me do that. I'm wondering why. Let's try that, see what it does. Okay, so and then you got the, again the, the different variations you can see over here of that. So it's basically filling in the gaps wherever you, wherever you, wherever you create a crop. So that's that's cool. I mean, again, stuff like that. I remember it. We had to clone. If I wanted to do this, I would have to clone all of this. I would have to clone all of this, right? And then kind of create this, right? Now it's literally 
a, a couple clicks away for, for crying out loud. Right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm excited. <laughs> it's all good uh, to me. <clears throat> what do you guys think? All right. Am I the only one excited? Uh, I'm very excited. I, I'm, I'm amazed by that. Okay. And I'm All right. also it's seven o'clock. Uh, again, I just minute. crashed the surface of this, but uh, that, there's more stuff that I didn't even cover. Uh, but it was all good, I think, anyway. So I hope you guys picked up at least one. Usually, I hope people pick up at least one thing from what, what I teach. You may not remember everything, but uh, you, you should at least remember one thing because I had folks come back to me 10 years later and say, I remember you said that Chopinism, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that always kills me every time I hear it. But Thank it, you, it, Teresa. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I picked something up too. And I, you know, I'm not really, a, I use Photoshop all the time, but it's like a utility for me for my After Effects work. So I saw something you did tonight that is going to make my little bit of work faster. I picked something up. So what, what was that? Tell me what, what, what was that? Uh, that you can get to all the uh, matte changes, modifications in the little um, context, menu, right context right menu right there, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that that that's what we call a game changer. Uh, yeah, because you know, I'm like you. I just do the same thing where I know how to do it, and you're like, oh no, it's easier. Just click this. Like, oh, okay, <laughs> sure. Thanks. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a game changer, particularly for beginners. But again, like I said, if you're new to Photoshop, you don't you don't appreciate it because you don't know what we used to do. That used to take hours to do. Now I can literally remove a background, and now most programs can remove background. I have several programs. That can remove the background, right? I mean, for crying mm -hmm. out loud, right? right. Uh, but literally, one click away, you can remove backgrounds. I could do that in Camtasia. I could do it in Photoshop. Uh, I could do it in my uh, um, Create Studio uh, program. So a lot of programs have the background removal tool available. But being able have, to do it with a click of the mouse is, is just awesome. I have a question for, it might be something we could do next month if you want to do a part three, but I usually use Photoshop to export an image for the web and optimize it to downsize it or to batch resize images. And I'm wondering whether this new version of Photoshop changes the way that's done or it, it, it has a feature and, and I was trying to do it, but it's not working for me right now. I did, it, it worked. Uh, there's this feature that I was trying, I was experimenting with. It's called automate and then generate plugins, but it's dimmed out right now. And this allows you literally to just add a .png or .jpg or .ping extension, and it's going to automatically save that that image into your folder uh, where this Photoshop is located. Oh boy! Which is neat. Okay, well, maybe, maybe we could show, show if I can get that working, I'll show that next time because I'm thinking I need that feature because a lot of time you're in a Photoshop and you don't want to lose your work, right? But you want to create mm -hmm. a variation of it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what that does. So I could literally just come here and then type in .png on the mm -hmm. end of this file and it's going to save that picture into that same folder where that PS, this Photoshop file is located. And you can see where that can come in handy. It's just similar to what we, what we used to do in the old days where we had create various comps, right? And you have five different images that you could kind of flip through, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's what that does. But for some reason, uh, it's not available to me yet. Maybe- well, Let's save it for next month. And do you have other things you might present then? Oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, I, I I didn't get through everything I wanted to do tonight. <laughs> I figured, I figured. John, are you cool with that? Oh, is it John leave us? You know, he's here. No, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm all good. Cool. All right, well, look, let's look at part three. What are we in? October, November. Uh, not, let's see, yeah, that's before Thanksgiving, so that's great. So that's not an issue for the holidays, is it? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then we'll probably skip in December. Is yeah, we'll special. probably skip December. Good. Great. Well, thank you very much. I'm I'm want to thank everybody who attended tonight. And feel free to unmute and speak up if you want to. Did comment. you see Tom was here? What? Our Tom is here. Yes, our Tom is here. 
Oh, yeah. is it? <laughs> he looks a little different. He's he sprouted a big beard. <laughs> and now he's gone completely dark. Um I'm trying. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hear you. <laughs> I was trying to. Uh, I'm actually connected on my phone, so I've been watching a miniature of the whole meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I had really, really, really big problems uh, connecting on the on my um, on my laptop uh, this afternoon, but um, I actually got it to work like a minute ago, and I don't really dare to touch it because I'm. I, I, <laughs> there should be two of me now. Um, I think on the on uh, the partic participant list, but yes, I'm here. Oh, Thank you so much. Oh yeah, I do see you twice, Tom and Tom Bergley. Yeah, it's uh, but I did I did find the uh, password uh, the meeting password. There is a meeting password. I didn't even know that, but he he kept nagging me about it, and I and I, uh, I found it was like eighteen characters long. So. <laughs> Very very funny, but yeah, I'm not going to bore you with that. But yeah, nice to see you guys. It's I've been uh, it's been a long time. I'm uh, very happy to be back here. Well, we're glad to hear you. So uh, hopefully, I'll be uh, I'll be able to um, join uh, next month as well. Terrific. And hopefully, uh, hopefully solve the uh, solve the um, little yeah. technical glitches that prevented me from uh, uh, joining at the beginning. Yeah, make it easier on your eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, I guess. Yeah, totally. So, is everybody doing good? Doing great. Couldn't be better. Mm, so, Dan to would want to know if the recording would be available. Yeah, usually yeah. I get it up in about a in about an, a day, and. And then at the same time, I'll put up the announcement for the next month's meeting. Right. So if, if you have two or three things to add in addition to the, was it called exporting? Right. Yeah, I do. Let me know what they are and I will promote okay. it. Okay. Will do. Good. So I will end the meeting for everybody. Thank you all for coming. And we'll see you next month. Great. Thank, Thank you guys. so much. Thank you so much. Looking forward to it. I see. Yeah, there it will all of the recordings are going to be on the Austin Adobe user group dot com website in twenty four to forty eight hours. Good up. Right. Thank Good. you. You're yeah. welcome. Good night, everybody. Thank night. you. Bye. Take care. Thanks for coming. Bye.